Okay, so let's see if you remember enough math to do this problem without the aid of a calculator. Now, a lot of people that are going to try this are going to get this wrong, not because this is uh, particularly difficult, but primarily because most people forgot you know, basic math like this, especially doing hand calculations with uh, decimals. But the problem is 0 0.6 divided by 0.2 times 0.1 and we want to get the answer to all that, but we want to express our answer as a fraction. Okay, so if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. Again, no calculators, but you can use your supercomputer, and if you don't know where that supercomputer is at, it's right here in between your ears. That is far better than any artificial intelligence. Matter of fact, that's actual intelligence. But I'll show you the uh, correct answer, and of course, I'm gonna explain exactly how to do this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so 0 0.6 divided by 0 0.2 times 0 0.1, what is that answer expressed as a fraction? Well, the correct answer is 3 tenths. Okay, so how did you do? Well, if you got this right, let's go ahead and celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face in A+, plus, a 100%, and multiple stars. So you can brag to your friends and family that indeed you remember your uh, primary school, elementary school arithmetic and they'll be like, yeah, good for you. I'm going back to Netflix. But, uh, you know, when they want to do math, they'll just use a calculator. But here's the deal. If you want to um, continue on in mathematics beyond arithmetic, okay, things like this, you actually, in other words, if you want to good, you know, study algebra, you can't just forget all that stuff that you learned way back in primary school or elementary school. This is really important stuff. But again, most of us who've been away from math for some time probably forgot all this. But let's go ahead and remember everything that is involved here. And to do this problem, uh, again, our problem here is 0.6 divided by 0.2 times 0.1. We want to do this without a calculator, and we uh, want to express our answer as a fraction. So here are the skills that we're going to need to remember in order to do this problem. Okay, so the first thing is we need to remember uh, place value. Now, of course, I'm going to explain uh, each of these step by step. But uh, what is place value? Well, I'll explain that in one moment. Uh, we're also going to have to remember the order of operations. So that's this little acronym right here, PEMDAS. And then we are going to have to remember how to work with fractions. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this. And just, you know, this is just a quick review on these topics. If you really want to uh, kind of relearn basic mathematics, arithmetic, etc., I'll give you some uh, suggestions as we get into this video. But let's start with place value. Now, notice I described this problem as 0.6 divided by 0.2 times 0.1. But there was another way that I could have described this problem. So in other words, I could have said uh, 6 tenths divided by 2 tenths times 1 tenth. Now, place value is how we name decimals. So for example, 0.3 is 3 tenths. The 3 is in the tenths uh, spot. If I have 0.32, how would I uh, write that decimal or how would I say that decimal? Now, of course, I could use 0.32, but if I said don't use the word point, how else could we describe this uh, decimal? Well, we have to kind of look to where the last digit is, what place it's in. This is in a tenths place, this is in a hundredths place, so this is 32 hundredths, okay? So this is just a quick review of place value. Now, of course, this is not a formal lesson on it, but what we wanna do here is we wanna write each one of these decimals um, as fractions using their place value descriptions. So here, uh, 0.6, we can think of that uh, value as 6 tenths, 0.2, we can think of this as 2 tenths, and 0.1, we can think of this as 1 tenth. So instead of doing this problem with decimals, now you can do the hand, you can do hand calculations with decimal, uh, excuse me, decimals, but that's probably going to be uh, more involved than most people want to do. The easiest way to do this problem, in my opinion, is just to convert each one of these values to fractions using the concept of place values. So the equivalent problem 
is 6 tenths divided by 2 tenths times 1 tenths. Now, remember, the question is asking to express the answer as a fraction anyways. So now that we have all of our values as a fraction, we need to take the next step, which, of course, is the order of operations. Now, the order of operations is extremely important in mathematics. And the reason why we need to review this is because we have two different operations here. We have division and multiplication. So in mathematics, things like this, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, even things like powers and the like, we need to understand what order to do this problem. Because if we uh, take the wrong order, we're going to get the wrong result. So for example, if I decide to do this first, okay, 2 tenths times 1 tenth, take that answer and then uh, uh, divide it or have 6 tenths divided by that, re that result right there, we're going to get one value versus if I go this way, okay, if I take this division problem, get that answer and then multiply it by 1 tenth. So you'll get two values here. Now, uh, we have to ask ourselves, well, which, uh, you know, order is correct? Well, again, we need to understand the order of operations. And this uh, little acronym here, PEMDAS, is a fantastic way to remember the order of operations. And, of course, these letters stand for something. So let me go ahead and explain this real quick. And then, of course, we'll know which um, uh, we should do first. Should we do the division first or, we should, or should we do the multiplication first? Okay, so PEMDAS right here stands for... It's an acronym, and this stands for parentheses, E stands for exponents, M and D stands for multiplication division, A and S is addition and subtraction. So this is a checklist. It goes from left to right, and we're basically going to just say, all right, do we have any parentheses in our problem? Okay, things like that, or brackets like this, or these type of brackets. These are called grouping symbols. So in this particular problem, we don't have any uh, parentheses, so we can kind of move on to the next thing. Now, I'm going through the order of operations very quickly, uh, but for those of you that want to relearn basic mathematics, you definitely want to uh, do far more challenging problems uh, than the one that we're doing right here. Okay, so uh, there, are no, there are no parentheses in our problem. Just for an example, if we had like 2 plus 1 parentheses minus 7, this is different than, say, 2, uh, well, actually, let me make this more interesting. If I had 2 divided by... Uh, 10 times 3 minus 1. Now, I could put parentheses in here, okay? Now, if I put the parentheses there, I got to start there, okay? But if I put the parentheses, let's say, right here, I have to start there. So I just want to make sure those of you out there understand this first step. Parentheses, but there are no parentheses in our problem. So let's move on to E. E stands for exponents. Now, when you have a power, like 2 to the third power, this means 2 times 2 times 2. Now, this bottom number down here is called the base, and this top little number up here is called the exponent. So E really stands for exponents, but you can think of uh, powers. So we don't have any powers in our problem. Now let's move on to M and D. Of course, this stands for multiplication and division. A and S stand for addition and subtraction. Now, this is a very confused thing here about the order of operations. So the next thing we do is not just multiplication. And this is where a lot of students confuse this, or a lot of people, they're like, okay, I'm gonna do multiplication. And it makes sense uh, because it's the, you know, the next thing on our checklist going from left to right, but that's not how this works. So uh, M and D is actually a group. So the way you're going to approach it is the following. When you have our M and D and our uh, PEMDAS, we're gonna do multiplication or division, whatever uh, we see first from left to right. Okay, now, of course, here, what do we see first from left to right? We see division. So that's going to answer that question in terms of what we're going to do next. So, again, we need to understand the order of operations. And A and S is addition and subtraction, and it works the same way. It's a group. We're going to do whatever we see first from left to right. Okay, so now that we understand the order of operations, we know exactly what to do first, which, of course, is this part of the problem. So let's go ahead and take the next step, which of course is having you subscribe to my YouTube channel. I definitely need your support to grow my channel on YouTube because my whole objective is to find people that could benefit from my instruction, okay? Unfortunately, so many people are just not getting the math instruction they need. 
uh, to be successful in math. And then people end up looking like this. And they're like, I hate math. I don't want to do math. I'm bad at math. All that is like 99.99% of that self-talk is wrong. People get frustrated because they just don't understand anything. And typically, uh, more often than not, uh, they're not getting the right instruction. Now, I'm not trying to knock any teachers not out there. It's not you know, what I'm trying to say here. But when you're in a classroom, you know, there's 30 other people and the teacher only has a limited amount of time, you know, you may need more instruction beyond that. So I'm trying to find people so they don't look like this and we can get them to look like this and be like, yes, indeed, I want to do calculus one day. And uh, really, that's what I'm trying to do because I have heard uh, too many sad stories throughout my life where people have given up on math where really all they needed was some sort of teacher and some sort of uh, encouragement. So I need your support. So when you subscribe, I kind of think of you as a new student. And if you're going to do that, make sure to hit that notification bell as well. Okay, so let's go on to the next step of this problem, which is our final step. And uh, what we have to do now is remember how to work with fractions. Okay, so we talked about place value. We uh, rewrote the problem uh, in fractions. Then we re, uh, reviewed the order of operations so we know exactly what to do first. We're going to be doing division, not multiplication. So now we have to remember how to work with fractions. So we have 6 tenths divided by 2 tenths. How do we do this problem? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at that right now. Okay, so how do we divide fractions? Well, we don't really divide fractions per se, but what we do is we rewrite fraction or division problems in terms of two fractions as a multiplication problem. And the way we do that is that we flip uh, the fraction to the right of the division symbol. We're going to flip it upside down. So here we have 6 tenths divided by 2 tenths. So we're going to rewrite this problem as multiplication, but we need to flip this fraction 2 tenths upside down. That's called the reciprocal. So we're going to uh, put the denominator where the numerator is at and the numerator where the denominator is at. So that's going to be 10 over 2. Okay, so once we have this, effectively what we have now is a multiplication problem. So now we have to remember how to multiply. Okay, so just to be clear, this division problem, okay, is equivalent to this multiplication problem. Okay, so how do we multiply fractions? Well, this is super easy. All we have to do is multiply the respective numerators and denominators. But the answer here is going to be 3. Now, some of you out there probably are saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, can't you cross-cancel these factors? And then 2 goes into 6, 3. And the answer is 3. Yes, indeed, that is correct. And most people probably remember that. But let's just see what's going on here. So remember, um, we're going to be uh, multiplying the respective numerators and denominators. So the answer here is going to be 6 times 10 over, let me kind of write this a little better, 6 times 10 over 10 times 2. So what you can do with your answer is you can cross-cancel like factors. In other words, these are factors of a number. So 6 times 10 is 60. 10 times 2 is 20. So these are factors of those respective numbers. But if we have the same factor, you could cross-cancel. In other words, we have a 10 in the numerator and a 10 in the denominator. We can get rid of that. So we're just left with this problem, 6 divided by 2, which, of course, is 3. Okay, so that's how we got 3 from this. And we are almost, almost done. Let's go ahead and finish this up. All right, so 6 uh, tenths divided by 2 tenths. We figured that out. That is 3. And so uh, all we need to do now is take that 3 and multiply it by 1 tenth. So 3 times 1 tenth, you're like, hey, uh, where's the denominator? Well, we could just always put that over 1. So 3 over 1 times 1 over 10. We're going to multiply the respective numerators and denominators. So 3 times 1 is 3. 1 times 10 is 10. We cannot simplify this fraction. It's fully reduced. So the answer is 3 tenths. Okay, so I took my time to really kind of review the main ideas of this problem. And let's go back and look at that real quick. So what we talked about in this video was place value. Uh, we took a quick look at place value, order of operations, PEMDAS, and fractions. But really, this is just a fast, quick, uh, cursory review for this particular problem. 
But uh, if you're like, you know, uh, thinking, you know, boy, it would be nice to relearn all this basic math or maybe to kind of um, review basic math and then go beyond that into algebra and geometry, I got two great courses for you. So the first is my Math Foundations course. You'll find the links to these courses uh, in the description. But my Math Foundations course is a three-chapter mini course, but it's like a uh, arithmetic basic math boot camp. So if you want to kind of get back into mathematics, uh, you know, you're like, well, let me just take my time and relearn basic math. That is the perfect course of instruction for you. And, you know, I'm going to be giving you full instruction there, not just quick tutorials. Now, if you want to go beyond um, basic mathematics, check out my math skills rebuilder course. And so in that course, I start with basic math. And then after that, we get into a ton of algebra and a ton of geometry. And a matter of fact, I continue to teach you some basic trigonometry, and then I finish up with some basic probability and statistics. Okay, so that's for those of you that want to kind of relearn a lot more math, or maybe learn it for the first time because you really didn't learn it the first time in school. But uh, anyways, those are two suggestions. And then, of course, I always have a ton of videos, a ton of content on my YouTube channel on these topics as well. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.